defines wage theft as when a person knowingly hires someone else with the intent to avoid paying and fails to make a full payment. Our KTSM 9 News reporter Jesus Baltasar, he sat down with the county attorney to discuss the issue at length. He is live in our newsroom tonight. Jesus. Monica, according to a recent study, the average victim in Texas is losing about $4,000 per year as a result of wage theft. Now, with full jurisdiction on these cases, El Paso County Attorney Christina Sanchez tells me they're committed to addressing the issue and want to educate the community that it is a crime and is prosecuted as such. This is an underreported crime, and I think, again, the misconception that you have to have a written contract, the misconception that this is only a matter that can be addressed in civil, in the civil realm and not necessarily in the criminal well realm, we're not getting those reported cases. So an issue prevalent in the borderland. Sanchez says El Paso County has the fifth highest rates of individuals who have not received wages in the state of Texas. Victims of wage theft? could range anywhere from someone performing contract work at a home or a business, to servers in the food industry who do not receive their tips, and even to people rendering babysitting services. While having a written contract facilitates filing a complaint, Sanchez says it is not the end-all be-all. The myths that I'd like to dispel is that you do not necessarily have to have a written contract. It could be something as simple as a text message exchange between the individual who is asking for you to do certain services, you performing those services, and then you not getting paid. Sanchez urges people to record any and everything that could help their case. Voicemails, messages, pictures, even document the progress of the work being done, but to ensure to report it in a timely manner. You have a two-year time frame, at least in the criminal realm, in which you can file a complaint, right? In other words, it's not outside of that period in which your case is no longer viable. Even after reporting it, reporting it to police, Sanchez urges people to, talk, to contact her office to follow up on the status of the case. And for people who might be afraid to report a case because of their documented status, Sanchez assures that it is not something they're looking at but rather making sure that the person gets paid. From the newsroom, Jesus Baltasar, back to you. Jesus, thank you so much for that report. And circling back to that contract to avoid falling for wage theft, the county attorney does encourage you to draw up a simple contract before agreeing to perform a service. Now, the details in the agreement should include something as simple as the date, time frame, and specifically what services are being performed.